Inspired by the past to achieve something new, the Houghton home Nelson Mandela stayed in for a time during his presidency has been re-envisioned into a boutique hotel which honors the legacy of this great man. Hi guys, I'm Irat Nivert from Kim H New. Welcome to Sanctuary Mandela. This was a very special project for me because this used to be Nelson Mandela's house where he lived for eight years before and during he was president. In 2018, we were approached by the Nelson Mandela Foundation in Tebe to help turn it into something special. So we assisted in designing and coming up with the concept and creating this beautiful boutique hotel which rejuvenates this beautiful building. With it being a heritage building, there were quite a couple of restraints involved in designing this ultimate concept. And the architects were really clever in bringing it all together because we had to keep that iconic look which is something that you could see on movies like Invictus. The main concept throughout this whole space is the story, the story of the man who lived here. And we didn't want it to feel like a, a, a museum. So everything from the entrance where you walk up from the parking lot all the way through into the space starts telling the story. That's why we brought these beautiful rusted steel elements in. It gives a, a sense of structure and construction but it's also got these words which we all would associate with the man that leads you up to the actual space so you can experience the rest of it. Renowned sculptor Andre Prinsloo was commissioned to make this piece, greeting guests at the entrance by capturing a familiar sight. The brief that I received was very simple. Um, I received a photograph and the photograph basically showed him standing on a veranda on his porch um, every morning and he would read his newspaper and I would use the reference of the photograph to get my exact position and stance ready and then I would sculpt with the clay with the plasticine clay over that. The significance of the statue is my diba in his casual. Even after his presidency when most people would relax, would retire, he was one that stayed on top of the news. He was always inquisitive and he wanted to dedicate his attention and his love to looking after children. Stepping inside, one gets a glimpse into the private world of Nelson Mandela. The intention is to preserve history and legacy while enhancing it with modern beauty and amenities. So I didn't want the space to be overpowering when you walked in. Uh, I wanted to start telling the story subtly. So we brought a couple of key elements into the space that you greeted by. I wanted to start off the story by having photographs I took before we started construction and that we actually framed and put behind the reception counter. A key part of the story that we touch on in all the furniture pieces is the structure. And what better than having original structure displayed like this? We had to bring in some boardrooms and this was really special for me because where these boardrooms are, they split between the footprint of where Madiba's original study was. And a lot of key things happen in these studies. So in the one boardroom, we've actually got a beautiful backlit glass section showing the original foundation of that structure. And that same curve's picked up into the swimming pool on the outside. So the step actually turns into the continuation of that footprint. So people can ask about that as well. The staff in this space is trained to be storytellers. So everything's gonna be story orientated. We were also very lucky that the foundation allowed us to use some of their personal gifts and elements that, that belong to Madiba. This was a gift from Quincy Jones. He actually wrote a song for him. And uh, this is the original he gave him, so we are allowed to display it in this space. We also brought some key elements from the original structure in, so I managed to salvage a piece of the wood of the entrance floor. And what better than turning it into an artwork? We've all seen parquet floors. This is a special parquet floor because it was in this home, and now it's framed up on the wall. So from up here, you can really experience that double volume space we saw downstairs that welcomes you into the hotel. Here it links all the bedrooms together. Now that all falls on a new addition to the building. The original building was on that side and I wanted it to be a clear definition between those structures. So we actually made a point of emphasizing all the structure this side. So the steel, the balustrades, even the skylights painted in contrasting black. So you can see it's different to the rest of the original home. I didn't want to have that traditional numbered room element running throughout the hotel. Instead, we were lucky enough to be donated the beautiful set of works that John Mayer did about Madiba and his life. Each artwork depicting a specific time in his life and, and telling the story that way. So what better than actually bringing that into each room? We've got a piece outside, so the name of each room is based on the artwork mounted outside. And it also encourages that whole storytelling and reflection element of the hotel. So you met at reception, they tell you you're staying in Father of the Innocents, for instance, 
and you literally walk around looking at the paintings, finding your room that way, thereby exploring more of the space and more of the life of the man who lived in the home itself. So this is the, the presidential suite. It's the, the main bedroom of the original home. It's where Madiba slept and it will be the, the key room in the hotel itself. We had to create a space that uh, felt quality but wasn't cluttered. But more like that home theme that we're bringing in throughout the whole space. And then to add on to the, the theme for each room, now this room is Father of the Innocence on the John Mayer painting outside. We linked that to the inside through um, some original artworks from the foundation that were created by kids for Madiba and gifted to him. The design team aimed to convert this home into a hotel which still feels like a home. So a way that we really brought the space together was using grey as a backdrop and a base colour really. And how we did that effectively with materials was bringing this as a sheer into your curtaining, into your lounging areas and into your suite areas. Grey, which is the colour of concrete, was just a logical place to start and built our way up with lux and textured fabrics and colours to bring it all together. We used like a dark mahogany and mahogany and that really did allow the space to feel much richer, complementing your lighter tones and hues that we've used. Absolutely, I mean the devil's in the details, so those little details and how they come together is what really turns it into a magic space. Yeah. The restaurant remembers Tata Madiba's favourite dishes. For the father of our nation, food was more than sustenance. It was about tradition and spending time with family and friends. Michelle Obama and Bill Clinton were just two of the people he hosted here. The restaurant is actually named after this beautiful painting behind me over here called Insights. Um, we thought it is uh, a beautiful name. It reflects back to your sanctuary Mandela, a place of reflection um, and also a place for insights. So we want insightful conversations to take place in the restaurant. Few have better insight into what Madiba enjoyed eating than his longtime personal chef, Oliswa Ndoyiya. I started working for Tata Mandela from 1992 and I worked for him for 22 years of my life. I'm standing here in the kitchen that I used to cook, but now we have changed it into be this kitchen. Beautiful kitchen is a hotel kitchen. I'm going to cook one of his favorite dishes, the oxtail stew. In front of me, I've got oxtail, potatoes, carrots, green beans, and garlic. And for my seasons, I've got a tomato puree, salt, paprika, black pepper, barbecue spice, and my oxtail soup powder. What I have to do with the oxtail, I have to trim all the fat because Tata didn't want to see fat in his plate. After trimming my oxtail, I have to boil it and fry it from its own fat, let it brown itself. Then I will add my spices. Then I'll boil it a little bit. Then as the meat is cooking, I will have to add my vegetables right at the end of the meal. This dish is the one that is inspired, one of the dishes in our menu at the restaurant. The dish is called oxtail ravioli. Those years that I used to serve data, I would say those were the great years of my life. Oh, well, I will never forget him when he will make people's faces smile because of what he can do for them and share with them. That was my experience, the good one. It's been a very fun and interesting project to work on, and ultimately it's a huge honor to be involved in an iconic international landmark such as this hotel. And I truly hope that anyone who gets the privilege to see this space enjoys it as much as we did doing it.